We'll take some questions at this time. Does this include any changes in the no-fault divorce law? Right now, there's no bill. We're still looking at all of that, and it's very complicated. Uh, but there's no bill at this time. So. Is it the long-range plan, though? Uh, yeah, we'd like to see some version of um, mutual consent principles. We think that's a, a great common sense um, idea to, uh, to do this. Now, he didn't develop, fully develop it, but in the absence of mutual consent, in other words, if the parties can't consent, which actually empowers the woman, by the way, to negotiate child custody and financial arrangements, uh, but it also would require, if they can't get mutual consent, they can, they can allege fault, physical sexual abuse, uh, abandonment, um, infidelity, adultery, uh, commission of a felony, these types of things, then it would be a fault basis as well uh, for divorce. But this is, these are things that are just ideas at this point. And John, given your success with the most recent petition drive, it's like, would that be a consideration also to, is, is to go back into this grassroots on a mutual uh, repeal or modification of your fault? Well, that's exactly right. I mean, we have hundreds of people in the field that are basically saying to us, what's next? What else can we do? And we like to, to get them to, again, think about marriage in a different way and to begin to work. There's lots that can be done in communities. We like to see 12 of these community marriage uh, uh, organizations created around the state within the next three years. That's one of our goals. We'd like to see the movie Fireproof, which just came out with Kirk Cameron, a wonderful movie if you haven't seen it, put in every church of the 13,000 churches in our state. Um, so we have several specific goals like that that we'd like to do uh, in the field in addition to policy. And I think it takes both. It takes cultural and policy changes. I mean, this didn't, we got here because of culture and policy, and we need to, we need to look at culture and policy to address the issue as well. But for right yeah. now, I'm sorry. sorry. Yes. But for right now, this is the church is just getting together and saying, "Hey, let's be united and see what we can do to strengthen marriages." You're not working on policy at this point. We are trying to, but there's nothing that's definite. I mean, you'll you'll be the first to know about it when it you know it's, if it's made public. But we're you know there's a lot to it's lots of involved in getting sponsors and getting language and all that. So. So in light of that, and since you're hearing your efforts as much internally as externally. You mentioned a couple examples. What else specifically are you going to be doing to reach out to pastors and churches to get them on board this effort? In your press packet, we're actually providentially, there is a national marriage conference, Smart Marriages. This is a collection of clergy counselors, social workers, therapists from all over the nation, some of the nation's finest. Not all conservative Republicans, many liberal Democrats that understand the importance of marriage as a central uh, socializing uh, agent to society. But this is going to be in Orlando in July, and so we're going to use this as a great tool to funnel as many core leaders and pastors and church denominational leaders to this conference to be trained in what can be done. Another thing is that mentor couples are extremely effective. I can tell you from personal example. Uh, we had professional premarital counseling and we had lay, and the lay couple was as, as good, if not way better, than the paid counselors. And so, obviously, if there's serious issues involving substance abuse, professionals need to be employed. But there's many, many problems, and I think the studies even show that in crisis marriages, a couple who's been there and can tell their story is statistically way more effective than a professional uh, who, who would approach the same thing. It ends up being divorce counseling instead of unification counseling. So. How do you reach out to people who aren't of faith, who don't attend church regularly, don't, or are not members of churches? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the inventory is a strategy that we have. You could insert the inventory as, you know, the, the statute gives you an option if you get four hours of uh, preparation. The inventory, I think, is a great thing for secular couples because it's, it's non-sectarian. It just asks you all these questions, you know, bank accounts, children, uh, you know, all these questions that are objective to really ask yourself, is this really what we want to do? And, and we find that a significant percentage of people that do the inventory actually realize, you know what, we shouldn't do this. And so it's a divorce that's avoided. And I would also say that about a, about a third of the couples that go through our program are not connected with the church or with the faith-based organization. And everything lines up with research. Yeah. John. Well, one of the projects we'd like to do, actually, is to network online every single church counselor, whoever, that will offer free counseling and just or, or free, you know, premarital education and just make that available to the public in every single county. And actually, that's a project we're going to start working on tomorrow uh, to get it online to make it available to everyone. Yes. Uh, in Dalton, Georgia, uh, the judges are also cooperating with the churches. And uh, a lot of civil weddings are performed by judges. 
and they're now requiring if you want to get a civil wedding in Dalton, Georgia, you have to take a premarital inventory and be trained in communication and conflict resolution. So the public sector can work with the private sector in doing this. One of the things that we say is that a multi-sector problem requires a multi-sector solution. We need to have the faith-based sector, but we need to have the business sector and the government sector. And we use the police department here in Tallahassee, the fire department. We, work, we want to work with everybody to make this happen. I mean, we're, we don't have any more money to throw at problems. We don't. I mean, it's just, just we have to look at bold solutions to difficult problems and ask uh, the, the public lawmakers, in addition to public leaders and pastors, to step up to the plate um, and really look at this issue seriously and address it.